وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to Quran Circle 2 I'm Arkham Rashid, your host In this episode we will be reciting from Surah Al-Takweer until Surah Al-Tariq and the title or the theme that we chose for today is Injustice and the Hereafter. So let's start off as usual by introducing and welcoming our guest for today. On my right hand side I have Sheikh Ibrahim Zidan. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Sheikh Ibrahim, if we can just quickly go over th- some of these uh, titles and their definitions. If we could start with Taqweer and Tiltariq inshallah. Naam. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa ba'd. Surah Al-Takweer uh, refers to what's going to happen in the Day of Judgment when the sun will be darkened and mm. will be overthrown. Uh, the total destruction to everything that exists, and this is how the Day of Judgment would be. That's one of the clear description of the Day of Judgment for people to reflect upon. And the same thing with Al-Infitar. This is what's going to happen to the skies. It will be split open and... You know, things that are so amazing, you know, horrors of the mm-hmm. Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Surah Al-Mutafafin is different. It refers to an action uh, in which people cheat on the balance. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether it's in buying and selling or anything else in their life. Where they would expect people to treat them in the most perfect way. But then when they would treat people, they would not do it in the same way. So this is the tatfif that we will talk about inshallah ta'ala also. And uh, inshaqaq is another thing that what's going to happen in the Day of Judgment with regards to the skies, that it would split open to another meaning uh, to that uh, effect because the sky is one of the mighty creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the same thing with al-Buruj, one of the descriptions of the skies and the magnificent creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, thank you for that. My sure. Uh, dear viewers, before we start our recitations, I'll introduce our reciters for today. On my right hand side, I have Qari Abdurrahman Saeed. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. Next to him, I have Qari Ahmed Rajab. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So today they will be reciting one surah at a time in turns uh, because the surahs are a little shorter. So what we will do, we'll start with a taqweer and Qari Abdurrahman can start us off. So enjoy. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا الشمس كورت وإذا النجوم كدرت وإذا الجبال سيرت وإذا العشاو عطلت وإذا الوحوش حشرت وإذا البحار سجرت وإذا النفوس زوجت وإذا الموؤودة سئلت لأي ذنب قتلت وإذا الصحف نشرت وإذا السماء كشطت وإذا الجحيم سعرت وإذا الجنة أزلفت علمت نفس ما أحضرت فلا أقسم بالخنس الجوار الكنس والليل إذا عسعس والصبح إذا تنفس إنه لقول رسول ذي قوة عند ذي العرش مكين مطاع ثم أمين وما صاحبكم بمجنون ولقد رآه بالأفق المبين وما هو 
وما هو بقول شيطان رجيم فأين تذهبون إن هو إلا ذكر للعالمين لمن شاء منكم أن يستقيم وما تشاء Thank you very much, Qari Abdul Rahman. Sheikh, if you can just give us a brief tafsir of this surah and maybe walk us through a few of its verses. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. Surah Al-Takweer and Surah Al-Infitar, they give a clear and a very specific description about the Day of Judgment as the Prophet said, as if you're witnessing the Day of Judgment. And no matter how much things are described, it's something that is overwhelming for all of us mm. because it's never happened and it will happen by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this mighty strong creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it will be destroyed and it will be totally uh, different in the day of judgment like uh, the sun and that's how the surah starts. It will be overthrown, will be darkened mm. and we know how the sun, we know nowadays how uh, great the sun is and how it's so powerful. All of that will go away and it will be thrown into the hellfire as some of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And the stars will vanish and the mountains will be moved from its place and the camels that is the most uh, type of wealth to the Arabs will be neglected and even the beasts will be resurrected by the to, to show the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everything will be dealt with the justice of Allah. Even the disputes among the animals will be brought into the day of judgment and the, the seas and the oceans will be ignited with fire and people will be uh, resurrected in pairs according mm -hmm. to what they used to associate themselves with, groups and the, the infant that they killed, mainly the females and the same thing with those who abort the babies and so on. It will be asked, by what sin were you killed? And the first thing that people will be judged in in the Day of Judgment is the bloodshed. Uh, with all of the bloodshed that we see nowadays, people will be uh, held responsible for this evil, evil crime. And then the book of deeds will be w made open for people to see their own deeds that they did in this life. The skies will be removed like you skin something. It will be removed away. And, uh, you know, one verse after another showing how things will be in the Day of Judgment and the Jannah will be brought near to the people. And every single soul will know what it brought to the Day of Judgment. Mm -hmm. Everybody will know. We forget what we did yesterday, but everything will become apparent and clear in the Day of Judgment. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, swearing by some of the creation of Allah, that this Quran, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam with it, and he's such a, a mighty angel from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is, to, is someone that is to be obeyed, and he's obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is not the words of shayateen or devils uh, and basically telling to the people what kind of evidence is that you're bringing to oppose this truth and where would you go and flee away from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you turn away from the truth. This is nothing but a reminder for all that exists, the jinn and the mankind, for those who would will and wish to be steadfast. Mm -hmm. And this is a reminder that this is coming and this is what definitely is going to be there and people would face this. So what are we doing to be steadfast on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and referring back everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever you will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will encompasses everything. So it humbles the hearts of the believers and have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart and to be not to be deceived because the day of judgment, uh, nothing is the like of it and it's not good for a person to be forgetful and to live a life of deception uh, by ignoring the Day of Judgment and what's going to happen there. Okay. Uh, Sheikh, let's move on to the next surah, which is Al-Infitar. And for that, we will have Qari Ahmad Rajab share his wonderful recitation with us. So enjoy. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> 
فطرت وإذا الكواكب انتثرت وإذا البحار فجرت وإذا القبور بعثرت علمت نفس ما قدمت وأخطرت يا أيها الإنسان ما غرك يا أيها الإنسان ما غرك بربك الكريم الذي خلقك فسواك فعدلك في صورة ما شاء ركبك كلا بل تكذبون بالدين وإن عليكم لحافظين كراما كاتبين وإن عليكم لحافظين كراما كاتبين يعلمون ما تفعلون إن الأبرار لفي نعيم وإن الفجار لفي جحيم يصلونها يوم وما هم عنها بغائبين وما أدراك ما يوم الدين ثم ما والأمر يومئذ لله Thank you very much, Qari Ahmed. Thank you. Sheikh, one thing I noticed in this surah, it says, Kiraman katibin ya'lamuna ma taf'alun. Can you explain to us who the kiraman katibin are and do they know every single thing that we do? The kiraman katibin are the angels, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted them by uh, with recording all the things the human beings do. Mm. And this is something that is mentioned in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet yes. uh, to show the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everything is recorded. There are two angels always with every single human being, two during the day and two during the evening. And they write everything that the human being do. Any action mm. that becomes an action, they would write this. Even the actions done by the heart, but they don't write what a person uh, whims and so on, this is not written. Or if a person repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately, as some mentioned, they, they, they don't write this. So it's basically the book of deeds that any action the person will be held accountable for in the day of judgment, they would write this and they know what people do. That's why they record it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that things will be clear in the day of judgment. People will be ordered to read their books and their books will basically be uh, manifest to what they did in this life. Mm -hmm. And the surah, as the previous one, describe some of the things that can happen in the Day of Judgment and the horrors of the Day of Judgment and how people will be of two groups, the Abrar, the righteous ones, and the opposite of that, which is those who are uh, the evil ones, the wicked ones. And uh, the, the Fujjar or the wicked ones, the evil ones, they would be punished in the Day of Judgment by entering the hellfire and they would never escape from it. Mm -hmm. And always the questions that be repeated in the Juz Ahmed, the last Juz, what do you know about the day of the deen, the day of recompense? It's a way to show that no matter how much we get to know about it, it's beyond our, our imagination. Yeah. That's why we need to have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts. And the last verse talk about that nobody would avail another. Everybody will come alone in the day of judgment. Again, to bring the subject of the excuses. No nations will say or generation would say the previous generation deceived us 
or a human being would say, my friend deceives me, or this or that. Everybody will come alone, and everybody will be responsible for their own actions. All right, thank you very much for that, Sheikh. Uh, without wasting any time, let's get into the recitation of the next surah so we can uh, speak about it before the break, inshallah. And for that, we have Qari Abdul Rahman Saeed. So go ahead, follow along, and enjoy. ويل للمطففين الذين إذا اكتالوا على الناس يستوفون وإذا كالوهم أو وزنوهم يخسرون ألا يظن عظيم يوم يقوم الناس لرب العالمين كلا إن كتاب الفجار لفي سجين وما
وإذا رأوهم قالوا إن هؤلاء لضالون وما أرسلوا عليهم حافظين فاليوم الذين آمنوا من الكفر يضحكون على الأرائك ينظرون هل ثوب الكفار ما كانوا يفعلون جزاكم الله خير Thank you very much Fadi Abdul Rahman That was beautiful uh, Sheikh, uh, I don't want to start the conversation now because we're going to have to cut off for break. So let's go for that short break first and then we'll speak about this, inshallah. Uh, dear viewers, we finished with the recitation of Surah Al Mutafifin. What we will do now is go for a short break and as soon as we come back, we will discuss some of its verses. So stay tuned. <laughs> وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Welcome back to Quran Circle 2. Now before we went for that short break, we finished with the recitation of Surah Al-Mutafifin. Now, uh, Shaykh, uh, if you can start us off with a brief introduction to the Surah and then maybe we can go through some of its verses. Now, Surah Al-Mutafifin is a unique Surah uh, because it was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ just before he migrated to Al Medina. And this was preparing the believers in Al Medina uh, to receive the Prophet. ﷺ. And it does not fit for the Prophet ﷺ to go to a place where people are still cheating in their mm -hmm. transactions. So that's what Al Mutafafin means, as explained in the Surah. Those who, whenever they would sell something, they would not really give the full balance because they would benefit this way. But whenever they are purchasing something, they would make sure that the seller is giving them full balance. Mm -hmm. So this injustice that human beings have, and this is, by the way, not just in buying and selling. Yeah. People, this can be their attitude in life. They would expect their rights fully, but they don't give, give back. the back mm -hmm. the rights of people fully. So uh, the surah starts with this and, and linking this to the lack of the belief or the weakness in the belief in the last day. Mm -hmm. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَا يَظُنُّ أُولَيْكَ أَنَّهُمْ مَبْعُثُونَ don't they think that they will be resurrected? When people cheat in their buying and selling or any injustices that people do in their life, this is something that should be brought into the hearts. Don't they think that they will be resurrected to this great day of the Day of Judgment when everybody will be resurrected and return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything is written and everything is recorded on them and the people will be in the Day of Judgment either from among the people of Jannah or the Hellfire. And the effect of sins onto the heart is so severe that it can lock the hearts and make the heart blind not able to see what is right and what is wrong and makes it difficult for the person to do what is right after these the saran or this covering to the heart and the ayat goes on with the with the believers and the abrar the righteous ones as it's mentioned in surah al-fitar they're on highest levels and uh, because of their righteousness and their good deeds that they're applied in their life and the delight that they would receive in the day of judgment and this is what really people need to compete with one another. People, they compete in this life for things that they would leave behind. But the real competition is with the good deeds that would make people superior in the Day of Judgment. And the last part of the Surah is really gives how people used to be in this life. The disbelievers mockering the believers, making fun of them, and going back to their homes and saying, guess who I saw today, these uh, people that are foolish and they would say things about the believers belittling them, ridiculing them. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, would say that on that day, فاليوم, meaning in the day of judgment, as if it's something very close, right around the corner, mm -hmm. right? The believers would uh, laugh at the disbelievers. That's what they say, whoever laughs uh, later, this is the real victory. And they would recline on recliners and looking at the disbelievers, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were punished. Then the last verse is, did the disbeliever benefited them what they used to do in this life? The answer definitely is not. So why then live a life of deception and disbelief? Instead, a person should be grateful to Allah, be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. 
Okay, and one of the verses that are mentioned in the surah, number 10, if we look at it, وَيْلٌ يَوْمَ إِذِ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ I mean, this is repeated also in Surah Al-Mursalat many times. If you can give us the translation for this verse, and then maybe we can speak about it. No. Wail is usually to translate as woe, or such an evil thing is waiting for the people, and also refers to a valley in Jahannam. Mm. So their place will be Jahannam, يَوْمَئِذٍ On that day, meaning in the Day of Judgment, for those who deny, those who say that this is all lie, the disbelievers, woe to them on the day of judgment. Mm. Uh, and, and they are deceived in this life and they, th they think that they are on something because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not punishing them in this life. When they're really, they're receiving the true punishment in this life when they are deviated away from the truth. Mm. So those who deny the day of judgment and only those who are transgressors and we have to pay attention to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying those who deny the day of judgment they are not people of reason or they get convinced this way or that way. They are nothing but mu'tadin athim. They are transgressors, they are wrongdoers, they are committing sins. And that's why they would deny the Day of Judgment. Okay, thank you very much for that, Sheikh. Uh, dear viewers, now we will listen to a recitation of Surah Al-Inshiqaq by Qari Ahmad Rajab. So go ahead, follow along and enjoy. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim إذا السماء انشقت وأذنت لربها وحقت وإذا الأرض مدت وألقت ما فيها وتخلت وأذنت لربها وحقت يا كادح إلى ربك كذحا فملاقيه فأما من أوتي كتابه بيمينه فسوف يحاسب حسابا يسيرا وينقلب إلى والليل وما وسق والقمر إذا اتسق لتركبن طبقا عن طبق فما لهم لا يؤمنون فما لهم لا يؤمنون وإذا قرئ عليهم القرآن لا بَلِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُكَذِّبُونَ وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يُوعُونَ بَلِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُكَذِّبُونَ وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يُوعُونَ فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ إِلَّا Jazakumullah khair. Thank you very much, Qari Ahmed. Sheikh, let's start with a brief uh, understanding of the surah, inshaAllah. Surah al Shikaq refers to what's mentioned in the first ayah that when the skies will be split open mm -hmm. for the angels to come down, part of what's going to happen in the day of judgment. And that uh, a verse is repeated twice, وَأَذِّنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ That this mighty creation of Allah, the skies, would listen to its Lord 
and it has definitely it should listen to its Lord because it's a creation of Allah and the earth will be extended and also it would listen to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it would get out from it what's underneath the earth whether it's the human being those who are dead or any uh, thing that is under the earth and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the human being that you work and you do so much work in this life and you would meet your work such a beautiful verse mm -hmm. that whatever you do in this life it's not going to go away you will meet it you're just sending it somewhere you're sending it to the day of judgment if it's good you would see what is good if it's bad you would see what is bad and that's why right after that whoever received the books with the right hand the believers they will have an easy reckoning and the easy reckoning is for the deeds to be presented to them only mm -hmm. not that they will be interrogated the good deeds and the bad deeds and they would return to their families in joy and happiness and so on everlasting joy and as for those who receive their books from behind their banks backs with their left hand they will curse themselves and they will be punished in the blazing fire because he was rejoicing in this life in a deceitful way in an arrogant way and the same word is used Masruran is used for the believers and for the disbelievers but the joy for the, the believers the real joy is in the hereafter the disbelievers they wasted their joy in this life when they followed their desires that didn't really take them anywhere it was a temporary joy and they returned to the real misery in the day of judgment so for the person to choose to wait right and to fulfill the orders of Allah waiting for the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment the disbelievers they thought that they would not be resurrected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of what they do then some of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear by by some of his creation and swearing that the human beings definitely that you would go from one stage to the other no doubt you were nothing you were fetus in the womb of the mother you're a child then you grow up to be a young adult and then adult and then you grow up old and then you die graves day of judgment and then everlasting joy or everlasting misery so what's the matter with the human being then why don't they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when the Quran is recited they don't humble themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's because they deny the truth and Allah knows what's inside of them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet sallam, give them the good news of the hellfire. It's a way of mockering them that they would receive the severe punishment except those who believe and do righteous good deeds. Okay, Shaykh, if we look at verse number 21, uh, from, from what seems to be a direct translation, it says, when the Quran is recited, uh, upon them when the Quran is recited they do not do sajda does this mean that every time we hear the Quran we have to do sajda it means that yes every time we hear this uh, we should make sujood it's a very recommended very stressed uh, thing it's not obligatory mm -hmm. uh, but there is uh, some rules to it it's not obligatory because uh, the uh, Umar anhu, for example wanted to teach the people he recited one time on Jumu'ah prayer a verse with sajda and he went down from the pulpit and he made sujood and people followed him and made sujood in Jumu'ah prayer. The next Jumu'ah he recited the same verse and he didn't make sujood and so that people would see that it's not an obligatory thing but it's mm -hmm. definitely something very recommended. But a person has to be, if he's reciting, yeah. then he makes sujood, yes, and to, uh, in salah and outside of the salah. If a person is listening to the Quran, if the reciter did not make sujood, then you don't make sujood. So the reciter of the Quran becomes your imam in this. If he makes sujood, then you make sujood. If people are sitting together, not someone that is sitting on his own and reciting and making sujood, it's only for him and for those who are sitting with him, if he would make sujood. Okay, and uh, the last thing uh, in this surah is فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ فَبَشِّرْهُمْ and then عَذَابٍ and أَلِيمٍ they're quite opposites. No. Uh, can you explain that to us? فَبَشِّرْهُمْ الْبِشَارَةِ is to give the good news, the glad yeah. tidings. And عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ the severe punishment. It's a way to uh, for mockery of the disbelievers you know when you uh, when a person say to another you know go enjoy your punishment right mm -hmm. you're not saying that the punishment is an enjoyment <laughs> one mm -hmm. it's a way to put down the person because the disbelievers in the day of judgment they will be humiliated mm -hmm. and physically punished punished and the humiliation uh, as it's mentioned sometimes is far worse than the physical punishment and they would have both severe punishment at all levels and their uh, all conditions. Okay, thank you very much for that, Sheikh. Uh, now we're going to recite our last surah for the day, which is Surah Al Buruj, and for that we have Qari Abdul Rahman Saeed. So follow along and enjoy. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسماء ذات البروج واليوم الموعود وشاهد ومشهود قتل أصحاب الأخدود النار ذات الوقود إذ هم عليها قعود وهم على ما يفعلون بالمؤمنين شهود وما نقموا منهم إلا الذي له ملك السماوات والأرض والله على كل شيء شهيد إن الذين فتنوا المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثم لم يتوبوا فلهم عذاب جهنم فلهم عذاب جهنم ولهم عذاب الحريق إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار ذلك الفوز الكبير بطش ربك لشديد إن بطش ربك لشديد إنه هو يبدئ ويعيد وهو الغفور الودود ذو العرش المجيد فعال لما يريد وهو الغفور الودود ذو العرش المجيد فعال لما يريد هل أتاك حديث الجنود فرعون وثمود بل الذين كفروا في تكذيب والله من ورائهم محيط بل هو قرآن مجيد في لوح محفوظ جزاكم الله خير Thank you very much Khari Abdul Rahman Thank you Sheikh, let's start with a brief understanding of the surah, inshallah. Surah Al-Buruj is a surah that includes a story, an important one that the mm -hmm. Prophet Sallallahu explained in a long hadith because the story has great benefits in it and for the believers to learn. Although the surah starts with some of the creation of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala swears by in the Day of Judgment and something that is witnessed and a witness, whether it's the Day of Jumu'ah and the Day of Arafah or the Prophet Sallallahu and his Ummah, and then right away after that starts with Qutila Ashab al the people of al uh, This is the famous story of the boy, the sorcerer, and the king. And the Prophet explained that in the detailed hadith. And because of the time, really people need to refer to this hadith to get to know the story in details. Mm -hmm. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, would teach us in the story that the most important thing is the deen, is our religion. This is the thing that we would sacrifice for and how that the people, they were disbelievers and believers. And the believers in the story, they were killed, all of them. And the boy was the reason for that to happen because he was, he was the one that called them to the deen of Allah. He was so much concerned that he didn't care about his life, but rather the belief is more important than life itself. And when they believed and this tyrant, this king killed them all, and this is where the, the, the infant spoke in the cradle as it's mentioned in the hadith, this young boy that his mother was about to be thrown into the fire and she was hesitant because of her child and the child looked at her and he's 
you know, not able to speak, of course, but this is a miraculous thing. He spoke and he said to his mother, Ya Umma, O my mother, isbiri. be patient because indeed you are on the truth. These people, they were all burned in fire, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising them. They returned to the mercy of Allah. The great lesson, when we see atrocities and evil things happening to the believers, right? what really matters is how a person is dying. Is he dying in a state of disbelief or the state of belief? Mm. Right? It's not about those who are dying. Those who are dying, if they die as believers, they return to the mercy of Allah. It's about those who are living a life of sin and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned and the, the severe punishment for those who commit atrocities and injustices on the face of earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even calling them, those who did these evil actions, if they would return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with repentance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept their repentance. So to that extent is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the most forgiver and he's the one that, uh, al-wadud, the one that is the most loving to the believers and, and those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also mentioning the story or mentioning just the mention of Fir'aun and Thamud and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also destroyed them and all of that in the Quran. The book of Allah, this is the book of guidance that came from al lawhat Mahfuz by the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as if this is to bring us to the, uh, to the end of all of these chapters of the Quran, this is the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to hold fast to it and not just to recite it, to recite it, to memorize it, to reflect upon it and to live our life exactly with what every verse in the Quran is telling us to do. This is the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us. And the more we are away from the Quran, the more we would, save, we, would, we would see in our life all kinds of miseries and what's waiting in the day of judgment is a severe punishment for those who turn away from this truth. And we should not just take it in general terms, believers versus disbelievers. Believers, they were believers with certain characteristics. It's explained to us in the Quran. This is what we need to hold fast to. The disbelievers, they are in total misery in this life and hereafter so that we see things in the right way and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deeds and to make us among those who are the true people of the Qur'an, those who would benefit from it. Inshallah, ameen. Uh, Shaykh, I just want to give you a few minutes before we conclude this program, uh, just to uh, give us an overall understanding of the Qur'an since this is the last episode, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. This is uh, the journey that we went through from the beginning of the Qur'an to the end in only uh, 30 hours or less. This is something that's supposed to be the whole entire life journey. Mm -hmm. Our whole entire life is about benefiting from the Quran. And no matter how much a person reach the highest level of knowledge, he's still in need to extract more benefits of the Quran. Never ends whatsoever that the Quran amazes us and it will continue to amaze humanity till the day of judgment. And that's why towards the end of Ramadan, uh, when people see that themselves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided them to fast the month of Ramadan, and to recite the Qur'an, this is a great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should take advantage of this favor before we lose it. Mm -hmm. You know, this is when you have something precious. If you don't guard it, then you might lose it easily. And this is the most precious thing in our life. If we don't see that the Qur'an is the most valuable thing in our life, then we have a, a problem that we need to fix and, and to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a call for us to review the Qur'an, to constantly recite the Qur'an, to reflect upon the Qur'an and to learn from the Qur'an how to follow the way of the Prophet وسلم, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the believers. And one of the benefits that we see when we see the whole entire Qur'an in, a, in 30 days or so, you kind of get a, a, a quick understanding of what's the message of the Qur'an. What are the things that the Qur'an is talking about? You would find it all about the Tawheed, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the implications of that would, by being obedient to Allah. And the believers versus the disbelievers, the characteristics are all there in this life and hereafter as if they're all connected and it is all connected. Life and the hereafter, it's all one thing. So that people would pay attention that the matter is coming and it's coming very quickly so that the hearts would repent and return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Quran is the joy of our life and that's why the Prophet والسلام, used to seek that joy in the recitation of the Quran and the dua that a person should make to relieve himself from sadness. In it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet وسلم, taught us that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the Quran Rabi'a Qulubina, the spring of our hearts 
and the light of our chests and to push away sadness and misery and all of that by the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that brings us to the end of this series, Sheikh. I want to thank you very much for joining us uh, on every episode and sharing your tafsir with us, sharing your wisdoms with us. Honestly, we benefited so much. Thank you very much, Sheikh. <laughs> And I want to thank both of you, Qari Abdul Rahman and Qari Ahmed, for sharing your beautiful voices with us and joining us many times here on Quran Circle. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. And dear viewers, that brings us to the end of this series. Now, I want to ask you to remember all of those who worked very hard to make this program successful, those that were working behind the scenes day and night, the editors, the cameramen, the people in the, the control room, all of those who put their lives into this and try to make this successful, please remember them in your prayers. And I hope you guys enjoyed these episodes and this series. And you never know, we might meet for Quran Circle 3. And until then, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.